Hey, a friend, Chris here from WideLogicProRules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro. Welcome to day 14 in our Newbie to Ninja series here on the channel and website, where I'm going to help you go from being a beginner in Logic Pro to becoming an expert, fully comfortable and capable to get right down to making awesome music in this amazing application. Today, let's have the rubber meet the road and go through the motions of laying down a creative idea into a brand new empty project. Let's do everything from loading a brand new audio track to record some guitar, to choosing a patch from the library for a preset guitar sound, to then loading a drummer track that we can play along to, to then laying down some takes and comping those takes together. So today's video is a general walkthrough of getting an idea into Logic Pro. And my goal for today is to show you how easy it is to get started. All right, first, I've already gone ahead and set in Logic Pro under the audio settings the input and output device to that of my audio interface that my guitar is connected to. So I'll be recording with the Apogee Ensemble and listening back through the Apogee Ensemble. And I've set the IO buffer size small enough where I'm not feeling any sort of delay when I play guitar through Logic Pro Software Mixer, but the buffer size is also large enough where I'm not putting undue stress on my Mac system. And if we take a look under the audio preferences under the general tab, I have software monitoring enabled, so I'll be able to hear my guitar through Amp Designer, Pedal Board, and other plugins in Logic Pro. All right, so let's close the audio settings. And next, I need to set up an audio track to begin recording my guitar. Now, I could open the inspector or the mixer and set the input for this Audio 1 track to that of one of my guitar inputs. But instead, let's go ahead and load a brand new guitar track into this project. Let's click on the plus button at the top of the tracks area. And I'm going to select the guitar or bass track type. To be honest, there's really no difference between the guitar or bass track type and an audio track type. The only real difference is if we have this option to load the default patch. When we load this track type, Logic will instantly load an electric guitar patch that will come with a series of plugins from pedal board for Stompbox effects, amp designer for electric guitar amp sound to other plugins for special effects and tonal shaping. And let's also enable the option to open the library. So if we're not feeling the default electric guitar patch, we can pick through other electric guitar and bass sounds. I'm gonna set the audio input to input 11, which is an instrument input on my interface. And I'm only going to need one guitar track. So I'll leave the number of tracks to create set to one. All right, let's click create. From here, a lot of stuff has just happened. Let's get rid of audio track one as we won't be needing it. I'm gonna select the track header for audio track one and just press delete on my Mac's keyboard to get rid of it. If we take a look in the inspector, we can see that Logic has loaded this default patch for our guitar sound. And if we open each individual plugin, just by clicking on the center of the plugin, we have a noise gate, pedal board for stomp box effects, amp designer for what looks like a Vox guitar amp sound, the channel EQ to tonally shape this guitar amp sound further, compressor to dynamically control our guitar sound, and tape delay for delay type of special effect that you can perform with. And if I input monitoring enable this guitar track, we can take a listen to what my guitar will sound like through this default patch. All right, that's a pretty cool sound to start with. I personally am looking for something a little more crunchy. So if we navigate to the library, let's click on the electric guitar and bass category. And we have various subcategories that we can pick through for different guitar sounds. So we have clean guitars, crunch guitars, distorted, experimental, clean bass, crunch bass, and experimental bass. So I'm going to select crunch guitar. I'm gonna navigate down to the old school punk patch. And actually let's load pedal board just so we can get a view of what's about to happen. And look at that, we can see the channel strip's been updated. We can also see that pedal board's been updated. If we take a look at amp designer, our Vox style amp has been updated to what looks like a Marshall half stack. The channel EQ has been updated with a different tonal balance. Compressor has been updated. And now we have, instead of the tape delay, we have the echo plugin for a different style of delay sound. And if we take a listen now to my guitar through this patch. At this point, I'm feeling really good about this guitar sound, but we can fine tune it further either by opening the individual plugins for example, we could introduce either the fuzz machine or rock distortion and adjust the tonal balance of that distortion.
That's a little heavy handed. Let's try rock distortion. Cool. And we can adjust the tone and crunch. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and undo all the changes I've made within this plugin by clicking on the compare button. That will revert the plugin back to its original state. If we open Amp Designer, we can also play with the controls of this amp sound. For example, we could introduce maybe some reverb. Dial this up. Add effects like tremolo or vibrato. or even adjust the placement of the microphone in front of the cabinet just by hovering our mouse over the bottom left corner of the amp. Pretty awesome. However, if you feel kind of overwhelmed digging through these different plugins, a pedal board, amp designer, the channel IQ, anything else, it doesn't have to be a guitar track. It could be any track type that you're working with. Well, we could try smart controls for a more intuitive and easier set of controls. So let's go up to the left-hand corner, close the library as I'm pretty happy with this guitar sound. And if we hover our mouse over what looks like a knob or a dial and click on it, we introduce smart controls. And let's adjust the boundary of this window. All right, from here, we have a much easier set of controls to adjust the sound of our guitar track. And again, smart controls are not specific to guitar tracks. They can be applied to any channel strip in your project. From here, we could turn on or off those distortion pedals, introduce tremolo for our guitar, adjust the tonal balance, add echo, and even reverb. If we open up pedal board, let's see what happens when I start to play with some of these controls. I've turned on the fuzz machine. If we adjust the buzz, we get more distortion sound. Or if we want to introduce some of that tremolo, let's open Amp Designer so we can see what's going on. Great. We can dial up the gain. If we open the channel EQ, we can adjust the tone of our guitar track very easily from a single dial, either making the guitar brighter or darker. Add echo. Dial it up. or dial up the room reverb. Cool, so I'm gonna undo everything I've just done using the compare button as well in the smart controls. And now we're back to our original tone with the old school punk patch. Additionally, if you need a tuner for any track type, it doesn't have to be guitar or electric bass, maybe it's a violin. You can open up Logic's tuner with this easy button right within the smart controls. This will provide a tuner. You can also see the tuner has been enabled in the control bar as there's a handy button up there too. So if we give it a try. All right, I'm a little sharp, so I'm gonna go ahead and just tune up real quick. All right, now that I've tuned, let's close the tuner using the button either in the control bar or down here in the smart controls. And also there are two buttons when you're working with pedal board and amp designer that allow you to open pedal board and Amp Designer very easily. Again, from the smart controls. All right, we have our guitar track. I have the input set to the appropriate input on my interface for playing guitar through. We picked a preset patch from the library so we can perform through a specific guitar sound for our project. So let's go ahead and load a drummer track so we have another instrument to perform with for our riff. Let's go up again to the plus button in the tracks area. And this time let's load a drummer track and I'm looking for a rock type of drummer, but there are many genres you can choose from, from alternative to songwriter, R&B, electronic, hip hop, and percussion. So let's select our genre and click create. All right, so we now have the pop rock drummer, Kyle, with his drum kit, which is the SoCal kit. And a drummer region has been preloaded into our project. So just like that, we instantly have drums that we can perform alongside with. 
So we take a listen to these drums. Okay, I was testing out to see if the tempo felt good, if the performance felt good. And for me, I want the tempo to be a bit faster. So I'm gonna go up to the tempo in the control bar and double click and type in a tempo of 135 BPM or beats per minute. Let's hit return to commit this tempo and let's take a listen. All right, that feels a lot better, but I wanna adjust the performance a little bit of drummer. So I'm gonna swap the hi-hats for the toms and let's adjust the kick and snare performance as well as the tom performance. Let's take a listen. That's definitely way more in the ballpark of what I was looking for. So let's close the drummer editor using the same button that we've used to open and close other editors in Logic Pro. Let's close the library. Let's return the playhead to the beginning of the project using the return key on our Mac's keyboard. And at this point, we can turn off input monitoring and then record enable our track to begin recording. I'm gonna press R on my Mac's keyboard to begin recording. And because the count in has been enabled, I'll have a one bar lead in before recording starts. So I've got a little room to get ready to begin recording. And I could record with the metronome as well. But for today, I'm just gonna record alongside the drums without a metronome. All right, let's give it a try. Cool, I've recorded my first take in this project. I'm feeling pretty good about it, though I think I could do a little better. So I'm gonna record one more take. Here we go. Okay, let's record Disable Our Guitar Track. And let's take a listen to each of these takes. Let's listen to take one by clicking on the individual take within the take folder that's been created for my guitar track. Press return on my Mac's keyboard and let's take a listen. Pretty good. Let's take a listen to take two. So I like take one better, but I'm going to comp this section of take two. So I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to hover my mouse until I see the mouse cursor turn into this line. And then I'm just gonna click, hold and drag over the section that I want to include in my comp or ultimate take, we'll say. And we can hover our mouse over each boundary to fine tune. And just like that, we've gone from an empty project without any tracks to loading a guitar track with a preset patch that we can play through, fine tuning the tone of that instrument using smart controls, loading a drummer track so we can play along with another instrument, customizing drummers, setting the tempo, recording our performances, comping those takes together. We've done so much in really a short span of time. Now, tomorrow we're gonna to start to dig in deep into these different areas and aspects of Logic Pro that you've seen today. Thanks so much, and I'll see you for more tomorrow in our Newbie to Ninja series here on Wide Logic Pro Rules. Take care.